Alleluia, Christ is risen. Thank you, Susie. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Happy Easter. We made it. In Seattle, it's a beautiful day. Birds are literally singing outside and tulips are blooming. New life is bursting all around, even as we are sheltering in place, missing our friends and families, and probably getting a little tired of cooking so much. Alleluia! Christ is risen! In our gospel text today, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. She knows that her Lord and friend whom she loves has died. That's what she expects. Even in the first century, humans didn't expect other humans to come back from the dead. Not even after Jesus raised Lazarus. She runs to tell Simon Peter and John They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. They follow her back to the tomb, everyone running, and they too see that it's empty. Peter stands outside, John goes in, and then they both go home. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. They see that the tomb is empty. Mary, though, sticks around. She doesn't understand either, but she knows she wanted to tend to her friend's dead body and that it's gone. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Even while birds are singing, skies are clear, and tulips are blooming, there's a lot of death around us. New York has had to cut back on how long people have to claim the bodies of COVID-19 deaths. People are being at least temporarily buried in a mass grave. Alabama is expected to have the highest per capita deaths of any state in the union. We're flattening our curve, and the U.S. is expected to peak early next week. We're not out of the woods as a region, a state, or a country. The death count will keep rising, and even after the curve flattens, we'll have to be careful so there's not a resurgence that's even worse. Yet even at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, 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 because Alleluia, Christ is risen. As Mary stands weeping at the tomb, we grieve ourselves so much loss that we are experiencing. Rather than go home, though, she looks in. There are two men, two angels, two messengers of God in white who ask her why she's weeping. She turns around, and Christ is risen, but she doesn't recognize him. He, too, asks, why are you weeping? She just wants to take care of his body, his body that was quickly put in a tomb to avoid work on the Sabbath. When Jesus says her name, she knows it's him. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Mary is just as surprised as any of us would be if someone we love had broken out of their grave and were walking around like everything was normal. She calls him teacher out of affection, and he tells her not to cling to him. 
There's more work for him to do, and he has some work for her, too. Jesus sends Mary Magdalene, ridiculed through history because of bad readings of texts, to be the apostle to the apostles, the first to proclaim that, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Mary goes back to the disciples who are sheltering in place and tells them that she has seen the Lord. While we're sheltering in place and grieving not being together, grieving not sharing Christ's body and blood, grieving our Easter brunch at the church, grieving delaying baptisms, grieving delaying bells and singing Alleluia, if we look around, we can see the Lord. We can know the resurrected Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. As we live through these times of sheltering in place and social distancing, Jesus offers us grace in that through no work of our own, he has defeated death. In his defeat of death, he tells Mary, not to cling to him because there's more work to be done. As we live through these times of sheltering in place and social distancing, Jesus invites us to notice what we have been clinging to and what we've had to let go of. As we've become, as we've become increasingly aware of what is essential and what is non-essential. Jesus' resurrection points us to life that isn't exhausting or draining, but life that has conquered death and conquered anxiety and conquered busyness. We'll get through this. We're here today. We aren't physically together but Easter hasn't been canceled. <laughs> when we get through this, though, will we have let Corona Tide change us? Will we know that the resurrection has changed us and keeps changing us forever? Or will we try to grab back those things we've had to let go of, even if they don't actually give us life? even as we're noticing now that they're non-essential. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and to those in the tombs bestowing life. It may feel like we're living in tombs right now, but this is not the end. Death is not the end Social distancing and sheltering in place are not the end. With the clear skies and the singing birds and the blooming tulips, let's embrace the grace that is, as Jesus tells Mary Magdalene to do, letting go. And let's celebrate the new life, the resurrection we're finding as we're forced to let go. Alleluia, Christ is risen.